Okay, so it's Monday, July the 11th. This is the third and last part of the video um, post for today. I just saw, I forgot to say one thing. If you didn't get your book in the mail, uh, let me know. Uh, we're going to have to maybe shift a few things um, for, for anyone who hasn't. But please uh, don't stress. Just let me know if you didn't get your book, okay? So moving on to today's gospel um, passage. It was one of those days where I read it and the first line kind of surprised me. And I thought, okay, I need to look this up. So I'm going to use some of the things I told you guys about. I'm going to give you a little bit more information about scripture as I unpack today's gospel. Okay, and as we uh, begin our prayer today, I also want us to continue to hold in our prayers our brothers and sisters in the United States, particularly in Dallas and all the unrest that's taking place, and any of the needs that our uh, community here in this course have. Uh, life happens. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff going on in people's lives. So let's uh, try to remember to hold each other in prayer. And I really appreciate, and I can't remember the name offhand, sorry, someone posted a prayer to the... Um, thing to the lounge for the people of Dallas and I thought that was beautiful and that's what we do we pray for each other so thank you for doing that um, and so let's begin name the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit amen uh, peace be with you and uh, so I'm going to read out of the uh, Catholic Youth Bible and just before I start also I just want to let you know I, I, I failed to say this I was showing you the different Bibles the other day and these are actually the same versions you know, they're, they're, they look different, but this is a standard one you probably see in the schools. But they're both, um, uh, they're both NRSV versions, New Standard Revised versions, but the Catholic Youth Bible. So if you read them, put them side by side, it'll be the exact same uh, wording, but this one has all the extra stuff in it. And that's why I'm using it today, because it actually has something about today's Gospel passage. So, uh, let's, uh, and we're continuing with Matthew. We're Matthew 11 this week. And so it begins, do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. Now, so you'll know why, just after that opening line, why I was confused as to what's the real message here, because that doesn't sound very positive. Jesus is not coming to bring peace, but bring a sword. What's going on here? So that's why I had to do some research. For I have come, uh, for I have come to set man against his father. Also not very positive. And a daughter against her mother. We're not getting any better. And a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Well, now that makes sense. Just joking. <laughs> and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Okay, this is not making sense. Whoever loves mother or father more than me is not worthy of me. So he's saying that you have to love me more than your own family. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the t name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Now when Jesus had finished in instructing his twelve disciples, he went on from there to teach and proclaim his message in their cities. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So it continues, the, the commissioning, the explaining to the disciples what their mission is. And so it's a bit confusing in this one. It seems like a kind of a negative uh, uh, gospel at first glance. But this is where the research begins, okay? So let me give you a little bit of a scripture lesson here. First of all... <clears throat> The stories in the gospel uh, contain Jesus' life, and Jesus' life is so diverse, it couldn't be contained into one book. So four gospels were chosen uh, as canonical when they were putting the Bible together. There were other gospels. There's the Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel of Mary, but those didn't become canonical. They were not part of sacred scripture when those decisions were being made. And so these four were. 
And so the four are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And actually, even though um, Matthew is uh, uh, first, it's, uh, Mark was written first. It's the shortest gospel as well. And Matthew, Mark, and Luke are synoptic gospels, meaning they're similar to each other. And if you put them side by side, you can tell similarities. Uh, wording's a little bit different, but you can tell similarities between the three Gospels, and often they borrow from each other. And there was another source called Q, and I can't get into that, but there was another source that they borrowed from. And, and scripture scholars are almost like f uh, forensic scientists, you know, or uh, detectives. And you really have to dive in and, and kind of take all the clues and kind of see what's going on here. And that's why theology is so fascinating, and you can spend your whole life just unpacking a small aspect of, of, of theology. So the four Gospels, uh, and, and they, they present a different portrait of Jesus. So for example, Mark was uh, written uh, for the Gentiles in Rome, and he portrays the suffering Savior. That's the portrait of Christ. And we know that because he's the only one of the four Gospel writers that actually writes before Jesus' passion, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's only found in Mark. And that's just typical of his suffering Savior portrait of Jesus. Now, Matthew, who we've been looking at last week and all of this week, uh, he, uh, that community wrote in Syria and they're written for the Jews. And he portrays a teaching savior. Luke uh, was written in, uh, for the Greek community, Corinth, uh, and um, it was for the Gentiles as well. And Luke portrays a compassionate savior. And Luke is often known as the gospel of social justice. And he's the one that has the, you know, uh, the prodigal son, the Good Samaritan stories. Um, he's very favorable, favorable to women in his uh in his uh, stories. And also Luke is connected to Acts. So usually it's Luke Acts. Uh, the, the Acts of the Apostles are is the same authorship as well. And there's a connection between them. And then there's John. And John is unique and stands uh, apart from uh, the synoptics. Uh, very different writings, very different stories, different language written later, so there's a wisdom involved in that, uh, had time to kind of assess what was going on. So uh, I love John's Gospel, but that's part three. And he gives a portrait of a life-giving savior. So that, that's some of the clues that you pick up on as you learn, as you study uh, uh, scripture. And then, you know, when, uh, when I was studying, you know, we had something called the Gospel Parallels, right? And, and this, and I'm opening to the passage that uh, we're looking at today, and they put them side by side, the passages. So I've got Matthew, and also the same passage is found in Luke, but there's significant differences, right? That would be, uh, reflect the nature of that community, their needs, and the, how they were writing, and what the portrait of Jesus was. So it's really fascinating when you study uh, scripture. But I had to go to a commentary, because I wasn't sure why would Jesus be telling us not to be peace or he wasn't going to be peaceful and he's picking up a sword that doesn't sound like our faith so I needed to know why this came across this way so I went to a commentary and I lost my little commentary in Matthew because I when I was showing you those commentaries you know when I was doing the three C's of scripture concordance catechism and commentary I showed you the little one of John uh, but I, I don't have it anymore. But I've got the Jerome Biblical, um, uh, the Jerome Biblical Commentary written by Raymond Brown. It's huge. It's a really thick one. And again, you probably pick this up if you're studying scripture. Um, and he goes in great detail. So I read just a little bit about what he wrote, and then I'll read what's in the Catholic. Um, uh, in the Catholic Youth Bible, because they have a little bit of a commentary there. But this will give you an idea of how you unpack scripture. So he starts with, in verse 34, the phrase, I have come. And he just focuses on that phrase. And he says, this important formula, three times here and in verse 35, so they count words and phrases, right? Emphasizes the mission of Jesus. And that's what these scripture passages over the, these two weeks are about, the whole idea of mission. Um, and then he goes on to say the, the phrase, not peace, but a sword. And this is what I really wanted to know about. And he writes, the sword is not to be understood as implying a zelotic uprising, but as a regrettable side effect of tension and division resulting from the uncompromising proclamation of the kingdom. Elsewhere, Jesus declares peacemakers blessed. For example, in the Beatitudes found in Matthew 5, he talks about blessed are the peacemakers, right? Um, and then he goes on to the phrase in 35, verse 35, a man against his father. And this is what he says. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Matthew makes the quotation from Micah chapter 7, verse 6, more exact and complete than in Luke, only committing the word son. So what I love about this too is that it tells us, you know, where it's rooted in the Old Testament, because we got to remember, Jesus was a Jew. Mary was a Jew. <laughs> The disciples were Jewish. They were following Jewish laws, traditions, teachings, uh, worshiping in the synagogues. Um, and um, so very often what Jesus is doing in the Christian scriptures is the fulfillment of the Hebrew scriptures of the Old Testament, making that connection, okay? And so you can see, I can't keep going because I'm going to run out of time, but that's how um, how a commentary helps you. It really helps you unpack and get to the, the, the reasons for uh, why they wrote some of the things they wrote when they don't make sense to us in 2016. It made total sense almost 2,000 years ago for the community of Matthew to use those words, and they understood what Jesus was saying. Okay, but what's interesting in the Catholic Youth Bible, which I told you guys is a great resource, they actually use that passage and did a little commentary in the context of the scripture here. And I'll just write what they wrote because I think it's awesome um, for the kids and for me. <laughs> I like to use this Bible. Okay, so what they say about that one, they start with a violent Jesus. That's the title. Okay, Jesus says a curious thing as he prepares the 12 for their mission. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. This is one of the many hard sayings attributed to Jesus in the Gospels. Jesus is speaking metaphorically to emphasize the extreme demands of discipleship. He is not advocating violence, but simply predicting how people will react to the new values and way of life of his followers. The author of Matthew lived in a community that knew living as Jesus' disciples was not always simple. Or easy. The people wished for peace, but living by Jesus' words brought them hatred and conflict with people in power. Kind of happens today too in a bit. At the time Matthew was written, Christians needed to be able to give up everything, including family attachments, in order to follow Jesus. That's one of the hard demands of uh, discipleship. Is it any different today? Are you up to the challenge. So that's what they wrote in the Catholic Youth Bible. So that helps uh, unpack a very difficult passage that a young person might be re reading and think, oh my goodness, why is, why is he saying this? And they've given a commentary. And this is why it's one of my favorite Bibles to work with. So I hope that helps. Uh, I think that was all that I was going to point out for you guys today. Good luck. Scripture is amazing. Oh my goodness. It is so amazing. There's so much to learn. I remember when I finished my master's in religious education and it was a hard grind, I remember. Uh, but when I was done, I just stood there and thought, I know nothing. I mean, I knew a lot. I had 20 courses. But in the scheme of things, I thought, I still have only begun to learn. And my desire to learn about scripture has always been there since that moment. So, and this is one of the reasons why I teach these courses, because it challenges me to keep reading and to get creative with scripture, and I just love it. So I hope you fall in love with scripture too. Uh, it's just a really wonderful tool to have as Catholic educators. Have a great evening. It's amazing. I started this at 7.30 in the morning. Now it's evening. Uh, hope I don't have more technical difficulties like that. Uh, I enjoy speaking to you guys through these video posts. I hope you guys enjoy receiving them. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but I think I might skip tomorrow, depending if my internet is up and running. If it is, I might post. If not, I'll take a day off because uh, today was very challenging to post. Okay. Uh, God bless. Peace.